Very. Um, this is this is this is nice. This is I like this what, we, what we're doing here today. We get a lot of uh, lovely ladies in here, and today Academy FM welcomes a world champion into the studio. We're joined by Nicola Joyce, who's the world amateur female bodybuilding champion, a title she recently won in Boston, Massachusetts. Morning, Nicola. Hello, morning, Ferret. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. Well, Nicola, I mean, how did, how, did just, how did all this start? Tell us a bit about your background and how you got involved in bodybuilding. Yeah, well, I've only actually been doing competitive bodybuilding for three years. This is my third year um, actually doing competitions. Um, we talked a bit earlier about my background in sport. I'm actually an endurance athlete. Uh, as my background, I've swum the channel a couple of times. I know we can see it. A from couple the studio of times. Here. Yes, a couple of times. Oh, um, keep that quiet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, not there and back in the same day, was it? Uh, no, although oh. you can do that, but yeah. I didn't fancy that. No, I've swum the, the channel solo a couple of times, um, and I've also done various endurance sports like triathlon, right. um, marathon running, and things like that. But but how I came to start bodybuilding really was that. I think one year I was just looking at what I might do the following season in terms of endurance sport and I just thought, you know what, I don't fancy it anymore. There's nothing that's exciting me and it's only a hobby. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do another marathon. I don't want to do another triathlon. I'm just not into it. And I'd always liked the gym training side of endurance sport, you know, doing a few squats in mm. the gym or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd always kind of regretted that I could never do more of it because obviously right. if you're going to go and ride your bike for 100 miles, you don't mm. want to have exhausted your legs. So I thought, well, okay, this year I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll, <laughs> I'll concentrate on gym work, see what mm. becomes of it. Mm. I worked with a, a coach and over time, the changes that happened to my body from, from being in the gym and cleaning up my diet as well, she said, you know, you could really compete. Mm. And I said, compete in what? <laughs> I had no idea what she was talking about. Right, she so, said, so when you were doing like stuff like marathons and, and mm. uh, you weren't really aware that there was perhaps a, a whole new venture bodybuilding uh, well, regime mean, out there? No, I mean, everybody obviously knows Arnold Schwarzenegger. You yeah, know, everybody yeah. knows about bodybuilding. But no, it wasn't a sport um, I was particularly aware of. I certainly didn't know there, there was an amateur side of it. I didn't know that there was natural drug-tested bodybuilding. Um, I just thought it was for great, big, huge guys. Mm -hmm. I'm, Nothing I, to do with me. I've got to say, my, my perception might have been a bit wrong. When we were told uh -huh. we were having a, a bodybuilder in this morning, I was kind of expecting sort of oh. this huge muscly ripped and, and you and you are you, you know, well, you look well, you're amazingly fit <laughs> See, yeah, that, that, must be the mind. that makes me that makes me feel sad <laughs> already on that. Um, but but mm. ge i mean genuinely yeah, i just want to go you've swam the channel twice yeah did you say yeah, right some time ago how did that come about did you just think is that a challenge that you'd set yourself um, or is well it i was always a swimmer i suppose mm. i I've always done sport, really, ever since I was a tiny child, and the first sport I ever did was swimming. You know, right. I was at Hyde Swimming Club. Um, so that's kind of my first sport, I guess. Um, and growing up here, I mean, I went to St. Augustine's, where it used to be, down in, in Seabrook. Oh, you know, yeah, I used yeah, to literally walk along the seafront every day. I used to see the sea. Um, it's not that far. Um, I can see France. Even I'll get though, over there. I suppose that's not a reason to swim the channel, but it was always there in the back of my mind, I guess, as a swimmer. Something I really, really wanted to do. Um, and I was part of that scene um, down in Dover there, where they trained for, for years. Um, as for why I did it twice, I'm not too sure <laughs> now. It seemed a good idea at the time. There were a few years between mm, between uh, yeah. the swims and I've done other swims as well like I've swum around Jersey other swims that are all, they are you <laughs> know recognised recognised swims just going to have a little sit down now yeah. and stuff <laughs> so, so, and when we were speaking off air Nicola you were saying about there's the, the, the kind of you're going to explain about the kind of in competition that you're involved in but there's kind of different facets isn't there kind of tell us about yeah. the, the bit that you're involved in well I'm a natural bodybuilder um, right. a drug free bodybuilder as we, we call it um, and all that means is that there are there are tested competitions mm. and untested competitions there are three federations in the uk that test their athletes um we're tested by um urinology and also by polygraph li okay. lie detector test really and what we're tested for is um is drugs we're mm. tested against the wada list which is the world anti-doping authority list um like olympic athletes are so it, it simply means you know we're, we're clean athletes we're natural so yeah. you were saying earlier about me looking smaller and all the rest of it than you would expect that's mm. why because right. i'm okay. a natural female with a female's natural testosterone levels which aren't you know is small yeah um so i'm i'm just working with training and food and 
that things surely like that. though, I mean, if you're going to become a world champion, and I know fair, it's, it, it, we're itching to find out about that. <laughs> if you're going to become a world champion, become a world champion naturally, and you know, without any enhanced drugs well, or anything like that. I mean, I think it's a brilliant achievement. Really. To each their own is what I think. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't judge anybody's choices, but all I ask is that if uh, you know you keep within your own federation. Yeah. So all I ask is that the people that I'm competing against are natural Everything. like me, please. So it's a, a level playing field, which is why, uh, you know, it's why the federations exist. It's brilliant. I mean, and, and Ferry, I, I know, I'll let you ask this question because I know you want us to take us back to well, it. Well, yeah, I'd just like to know, how, you know, the, the American thing right now. Yeah. How on earth did you get from, let's say, uh, working out in a gym in Cheriton to standing on that stage in Boston? Tell us the, the, the transition. Were you part of a, you have to be a member of a UK team or a British team first? You, well, I was selected to be part of the UK team um, I, I competed in a competition called the UK DFBA, which is one of the three uh, tested federations in the UK, United Kingdom Drug Free Bodybuilding Association. Um, so I did their competition this year uh, in October. And from that, I was selected by the team manager to be um, part of the amateur team going out. There, there was a pro team, pro athletes and amateur athletes. Um, so I was the amateur ladies bodybuilding representative on the team. Um, absolutely amazing for me, you know, as a, as a just a normal person who loves sport mm. to be selected to go and represent the UK and America. I mean, mm. phenomenal. No matter I what sport you do, it. if you're exactly. picked, no matter what sport you do, if you're picked to represent your country, I know, it's, right? Mate, you're so proud. Yeah, sure, I mean, yeah. that's why I'm still wearing my yeah, team top pinos. Yeah, you've got to be UK yeah, champion, yeah. world champion. I haven't taken it off yeah. since. <laughs> wear it with pride. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I would wear it with pride. Um, but, I mean, the, set the stage at uh, Boston. I mean, it's just, was it a, lot, a massive competition? Uh, is, it was, is it supported out there? Is it big out there? Yes, it's very big out there, actually. Especially, it's the natural side of the sport that we were talking about which um you know is great it, it seemed very popular some fantastic athletes out there absolutely mm -hmm. phenomenal um and yeah for me it was certainly a step up uh, absolutely certainly a step up i mean even down to the size of the stage it was huge right, <laughs> i yeah. felt like a little pee on a mountain <laughs> or something you know uh, yeah it was a lot more athletes a lot more glitz and glam right. there were eight countries represented yeah. you know so yeah for me and another thing, you keep we keep harping on about this amateur. Mm -hmm. So, did you have to fund all that yourself? Yes, I did. As, as an amateur athlete, I mean, the UK DFBA they did fund the pro athletes, um, mm -hmm. but they only they can only generate funding by ticket sales for the sh from the shows here in the UK. Obviously, so right. um, there was only enough money to fund the pro athletes. Um, which so, what's your next move after being a world champion? You want to go back and get your tie? Are you looking for sponsors? Yeah, certainly. In next year, my goal is to qualify for the team again. My goal is to go out again to the States and defend my title. Yeah. Um, awesome, I love that. But, love uh, to yeah, yeah, defend, defend the world my title, yeah, yeah. defend my crown. Um, but ultimately, I would like pro status as well. I mean, that's mm. what I think we all want. We all want to keep climbing up the tree um, and get pro status in the end. But yeah, I mean, it all costs money when, you know, when you move from competing here in the UK to competing overseas obviously it does cost mm. money so I would love any sponsorship if any local well, companies out chance, there guys if you're out yeah, there and you I, want to sponsor a world champion yeah. just get in touch with this station just think you could have like you know the, the firm's logo on your t-shirt or your lad logos actually one, one you don't wear much when not you're competing not on my bikini you? no there's not much space for bikini <laughs> but yeah I could have it on a, on a t-shirt or a hoodie there you go <laughs> I, I, I've got to say Nicole I'm, re I'm really kind of um, it, it's nice to see somebody so infused and so dedicated to what you do as well the fact that you're doing that at an amateur level Level, yeah, getting over there yourself there, a comeback with a world champion title. I mean, it's really, it's, we get some great guests every Saturday, and uh, and, and you're one of them. So thank you, thank yeah, you ever so special, much. Thank special, special, nice to have in. a world champion in the, in our studio. Oh, so. it's a pleasure to come in. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Is there anybody you'd like to say thank you to before we uh, before we play some music? Oh, there are so many people. When I said that I, I was going to Boston, but as you say, it was self funded. I, I scraped around for sort of bits of cash here and there. Um, I mean, obviously, my friends and family have always been very very supportive, but. I, um, I belong to a local networking group, BNI, yep. down in Folkestone, and pretty much every single member of the group put their hands in their pocket and gave me a little bit of cash, uh, which I was not expecting. Brilliant. I was absolutely yeah. overwhelmed. So, to the guys of uh, Folkestone BNI, thank well you done. very I much. I mean, they must be very grateful as well, because let's face it, a lot of times you give sponsors to athletes and there's nothing, but you've come back as a world champion with yeah. the help of those BNI guys. I was pretty guys. relieved, I must yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola, please uh, keep us up to date with what you do, um, yeah. and thank you ever so much for coming in. Uh, we've got to go now, because we've got to head some news. Well, I've got to go, because I've got to go and train. Oh, Love that. Right. In no. chest day. Thanks. All the way. Right Thanks for the coming. Ends. Thanks for coming in, Nick. Thanks it's been great me. talking to Thanks you. Thanks for having me here.